Biomes are large areas of the environment that are classified by their vegetation, soil, climate, and their wildlife, all of which are controlled by their temperatures and precipitation. Today, we're going to be talking about the Arctic tundra. The word tundra comes from the Finnish word tunturia, meaning treeless plain. This biome is found in the northernmost parts of North America, Europe, Siberia, and Asia, and parts of Antarctica. It is the coldest of the biomes with temperatures ranging from negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Tundra winters are long, 10 months long, dark and cold. Remember that negative 40 degrees? The temperatures are so cold that there is a layer of permanently frozen ground below the surface. This is called the permafrost. This permafrost is a defining characteristic of the tundra biome. In the tundra summers, the top layer of soil thaws only a few inches down, and this is what allows for plants to grow. There are around 1,700 vascular plants found in the Arctic tundra. Compared to the over 200,000 species of plants found in the tropical rainforest, the short growing season means that plants need to grow fast and produce seeds in a short time. In this biome, plants have specific adaptations to these harsh conditions, like shallow growing roots, growing small hairs on their stems for insulation, waxy leaves and growing small. Smaller plants are protected from the harsh winds and can absorb heat from the ground. They also tend to grow in clumps, which also protects them from the wind and cold. The plants aren't the only ones that have to deal with the harsh temperatures of the tundra. If you take a moment to observe many of the animals, you can see some of these traits. If you said heavy coats, you nailed it. Thick coats and insulating feathers ensures an animal's survival in this biome. Take a look at the poster child of the Arctic tundra the king of the tundra, the polar bear. These massive predators are the largest of the bear species in the world. Their fur is translucent and blends in so well with the snow that they can look as if they are just disappear. They use this camouflage to sneak up on their prey. Prey like seals. They will even prey on larger prey like narwhals and walruses and even beluga. And they will never give up the opportunity to pass up on a beached whale carcass. Yum. Their fur is so insulated that large males can become overheated when pursuing their prey. Even the king of the tundra has competition. There is another apex predator, the brown bear. With warmer temperatures and climate change, these two apex predators are coming closer and closer together. Unlike the polar bear, the brown bear hibernates through the harsh winter months. Polar bears are more carnivorous than most bears. The brown bear will feed on large herbivores like caribou and moose, and they'll also eat roots, fruits, grasses, and herbs, and everything in between. They especially take advantage of the yearly arrival of salmon. Salmon migrate from the oceans to breed and lay their eggs in the rivers of the Pacific Northwest all the way up to the Arctic tundra. And the brown bears make good use of this flush of nutrients to fatten up for their winter nap. Eagles, otters, Gulls, arctic wolves, and even arctic foxes will take advantage of this annual event. Other animals that inhabit the tundra also have large and insulated coats like muskox, caribou, and arctic fox. In winter their coats grow thicker, and in the spring when temperatures start warming up and the snow starts to melt, that thick layer of fur starts to shed off. Otherwise, they would overheat in those warm summer days. 
The lack of snow in the spring and summer poses an issue for the Arctic fox. He sticks out. So when he sheds his winter coat, he changes colors as well. Now he blends in with the Arctic plants and the rocks. And that's perfect for him, especially when it comes to the visitors of the tundra. Some species decide it's too cold in the winter to stick around. And not all are lucky enough to sleep through it like the brown bear. Instead, many species migrate. Every year, millions of birds of over a hundred species come to the tundra in the spring to raise their young. Geese, ducks, shorebirds, swans, and even songbirds all make the trip from all over the world, even the Antarctic regions. But why do they come to the tundra? Simply put, it's the food. The long daylight of the tundra's short growing season causes an explosion of life for the plants accustomed to this environment. With plants comes insects and fish, making the tundra a bountiful area to raise their young. A bonus of moving to the tundra is there are less predators than there would be if they nested in the tropics. But all these newcomers raising their young and laying eggs is also a good thing for our friend, the Arctic Fox. With his new summer camouflage, he can easily steal an egg or two. Caribou or reindeer are another large animal that calls the tundra home. These herbivores go through the longest land migration on the planet. They travel around 2,000 miles from their winter grounds to their summer home. And just like the birds, they follow the food. And they are built for life in the tundra, with long legs for walking through the deep snow, broad hooves that act like snowshoes, and a thick coat of fur for warmth, and a diet of lichens to help them survive the winter. The climate in the Arctic tundra is tough, but the animals and plants that survive here are tougher. They've adapted to survive when no others can. Thick coats, hibernation, taking advantage of food when it's available, migrating and moving to places with more resources, blending in, and just being cunning. <laughs>